so here we are going to do this sit easy how do you sit do you, do you, do you sit it arms folded like this as if there's nothing more to give or nothing more to get or do you sit like this sit easy so shall we say will you do this with me sit easy stand tall walk well uh, so my first script is from proverbs 18:16 a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men so we don't have to strive for our greatness god has placed in us a gift from him that makes room so whenever you are stuck in a situation you feel ill treated harassed restricted can't go forward just remember and say god has placed a gift in me shall we say that together god placed a gift in me and it's making room at every age and stage of our life he makes room and who makes the room god's gift in us makes the room and god being the author of that gift he works with it god makes room so never if you ever feel constricted constrained because of your failures or someone's injustice just refer to god's gift making room and no one else can hinder that when we are determined to work with god's gift in us we go wrong or we go small when we set aside god's gift and we try to work it ourselves and that gift will bring us before great men john 1:12 to 13 but as many as received him that's where the greatness begins if not you have to strive all your life to find stature look tall and uh, you know whatever you think that makes you uh, shine beyond others when we have to strive for for it it's 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 a lot of effort and every time you feel the shortfall and some more effort it's a tiring stressful effort but as many as received him that's where greatness begins 1 john uh, big upon john chapter 1 verse 12 is one of those scriptures you need to know by memory as many as received him to them he gave the authority the privilege the right to become children of god even to those who believe in his name who were born not of not of blood nor of the will of the flesh that's how our natural birth occurred which god honored when parents came together gave us cell each and the body was forming and god's spirit came and as god's spirit came from heaven into that little body man became a living soul say with me man became a living soul genesis 2 so and happens all the time when a child is conceived and growing only thing god does not make any more out of the dust of the ground god makes out of two cells a husband gives and a wife gives and out of it god makes give me a wave if you understood that but the same thing happens he sends his spirit and man becomes a living soul in his human experience while the spirit is working for the god experience so let's say together help me to mind the god experience well enough while the human experience goes on because if our human experience runs ahead and god experience is slow or stagnant we are on our own we are not going to be great we'll be fire fighting all the time and we feel this other son just and i am not enough this goes on all the time in human kind if you don't allow the god experience to grow even more than your human experience okay all right so as many as received him to them gave he the right to become the children of god those who believe in him john 14:12 then he said in my father's house when you come into his family your father's house are many dwelling places if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you that's a specific you so there is a god prepared place for you when you pop out of your mother's womb you are god is growing you into the god prepared place so your present level of satisfaction or dissatisfaction your present level of favor or frustration depends on how much of that god space you feel is there for you you have allowed god to grow you into it if you feel a god space possibility potential this big and you have allowed him to grow you only this small there's a frustration level of that much 
got it so wise thing is today say lord i understand it's your gift you are growing in me let my god experience fill my human experience he can do it today but it begins with you receiving me into your life as savior as shepherd as master and lord if you agree to the savior part shepherd master and lord part he will look after so to receive him into your life as your savior you are confessing to him you don't have to confess to any man confession to man doesn't change you if you confess to the christ that you need this saving experience of him saving you from the burn patches the hard places the thorny places that are still inside you if you have ever had sciatica it's a terrible thing the moment you do this ah so there are places like that in us in our soul that that has happened so layman's explanation is a nerve root that's coming between two vertebra gets pinched between a thing called osteophyte and hey, you don't know what brings it on so you're all the time on tension now that's a physical analogy that parallels our soul analogy of how our soul is set at times because of the thorns that have come because of the hard places that have come did you understand that so our, our, our journey today is to identify our human experience what's pimples troubles fires thorns whatever it is in it and thank god for the good part of it there'll be a bad part and an ugly part uh, we don't the ugly part is our doing bad part is others doing so we ignore we prefer to ignore the ugly part that we have been doing but we magnify the bad part others have been doing how many of you remember clint e stood in good the bad the ugly you are not that old jero yeah so uh, b- b- when that film came to savoy I-, i was in the age of going and seeing films and we wanted to see all the clint e stood films at that time it did fistful of dollars good the bad the ugly and there was another dollar one oh, okay that's all right so the today we are going to say my shall we say together my god experience is going to grow from good into all that is bad and sh- casting out all that is ugly in my life in jesus name so that's how the dwelling place of the father's house grows in us as we allow him to work with us james 1:17 how does the good be- gift becomes a perfect gift so that we sit easy in grace and knowing that we well belong in our father's household we are no more often no more searching no more feeling forsaken no more not knowing where we are heading as cain lamented uh, every good thing james 1:17 every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above so there's a good gift in me that the lord is working out to stretch it into all the room god has for me in this world we never have to feel i mean a very small place we don't have to because the room god has for us the dwelling place he has for us is sufficient and we will have satisfaction so let's say together sufficient satisfaction so the stop the grumble and get on to what god has for us every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of light so there's some more to download into our lives uh, uh, both hirant and i are 49 years plus 240 months we counted years after 49 okay uh, so but we are getting ready for more downloading from heaven every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above coming down it's still coming down more of him from the father of light with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow god does not give up the project lalit mendes what he had in his mind about me when i popped into my mother's womb and out of my mother's womb he's working relentlessly to get me into his shape so i say i am a work in progress he doesn't change his mind about you sometimes we change our mind about what we can do 
we, we pitch our goals shorter, uh, lower, but he doesn't. He works to the perfect sense he has about our life. Every good thing, whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. So when our stature is arising in us, which is the next step we are going to do, what's happening actually is Jesus in us is recovering all what God has for me. That's growing up in stature. Ephesians 2, 5 to 6, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. So not our effort, where we are in short supply, he keeps pumping grace, not our effort. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, which means the little fellow that came from heaven knew in the mother's womb what a happy and holy place he came from it. And mother's womb was every way physiologically, histologically, embryologically fitted for the little fellow to feel utterly comfortable, well supplied in that place. And then starts the grumbles, the scowls, the howls, the growls. Anything else you have been doing? Scowl, howl, growl, and the singhala owl. That matches, isn't it? Scowl, growl, howl, singhala, owl oh, uh, began, but thank God, he is restoring. So we are, we are seated with him in the place he always had for us. So no more sense of unworthy, insecure, or all the cover-ups we have to use. Some people cover up with ferocity, external. <clears throat> Some people cover up with going inside and hiding themselves. They are so polite. Always they want to say the right thing. And they are living trembling inside them because they may say the wrong thing. So two kinds of cover-up, the quiet cover-up or the loud cover-up. Give me a way if you understood that. So ask your neighbor, which cover-up do you practice? Quiet cover-up or the loud cover-up? I practice the loud cover-up. I'm gregarious, extroverted. When I get scared, I speak more. I'm not the kind of chap who goes inside. I'm the chap, uh, I'm the chap who, uh, my, my cover-up is, I come out ferociously when I'm scared. We all have cover-up, but thank God for Jesus. Say, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Since he came into us, he's folding up the cover-ups little by little. And he is manifesting his nature little by little. 2 Corinthians 5.17, all things are passing away. All things are passed away. All things are becoming new. So in your Christ, once the Savior comes in, he helps us to fold up things that we were putting out. And he grows his nature from inside out. That's the Christian experience. So next time when you find that old cover up popping up, you just speak to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, my savior, fold this nature, if possible, permanently. That next time in my reaction or response, that nature will not come out, Christ will grow and represent me. Shall we say that together, Lord Jesus? Let my old nature cover up, not pop up, but your nature regrowing in me come forward in Jesus' name. Uh, yes, so here is the process, Colossians 3, 1 to 4. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above. So our heart moves towards the God experience. Let's see this, Lord Jesus. Shall we say it together, Lord Jesus? Let my heart grow towards the God experience. So initially we have to learn a lot of things. As you read the scripture, like a child, we begin to learn the way God deals with things, mostly the way he deals inside us. So he. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, 
keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God one more time seek the God experience will you say with me seek the God experience seeking how God makes the room God takes it forward God expands my horizons opportunities whatever is available for me God expands it and God grows it that's what Christ does for me set your mind on the things above how God will do it not on the things that are on the earth how I have been doing it and how I have been tackling it did you understand that so the two will be almost in competition on a good day like sunday morning wonderful time of worship shall we give a great hand clap for that wonderful type of worship that's one of the best theological songs i heard on the blood of jesus shiloh where are yeah you'll send me the words of it thank you jesus for the blood applied isn't it thank you jesus for the blood applied that is actually a statement of jurisprudence wisdom of god in in how he deals with human problems that's what divine jurisprudence is in that thing god thank you jesus for blood applied and for the ransom that was sufficient for all redemption shall we say together ransom that paid adequately all my shortfall and dividends lifelong available to make all the room god has for me got it that's what the ransom means lifelong jesus pays and he never says can't and then when we are in a relationship when we are discipling people we say lifelong jesus is paying for me out of his bounty out of his generosity gratis and we learn that character of god that stature of christ to be like that to others whom we are bringing to christ that's the story of how the stature of christ moves out from us into our workplace relations and whomever around us did you understand that now i have to backtrack a little I had to backtrack a little to an old story. There the first words man ever spoke in the universe was what? Maybe the second bird. God came looking for Adam. Genesis 3. they heard the sound of the lord god walking in the garden genesis 3:8 and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord from the presence of the lord god among the trees of the garden so adam hid behind one tree eve hid behind another tree because they couldn't trust each other now he was blaming her she was saying he didn't protect me i can't trust this fellow so he's behind that tree scared of god and scared of her she's behind that tree scared of god and scared of him did you understand the scenario they lost fellowship not only with god they lost fellowship with each other that's how it is till christ restores that's how it is even in marriage till christ comes into both of them we are hiding if not 100% from each other at least 50% from each other and we don't even know then christ comes in and he slowly removes the veils he slowly removes the cover up in a way we are not insulted we are not hurt we are not embarrassed but it's christ all this is between christ and us but others begin to see he's easier she's easier something inside has changed it begins to show on the outside okay so certainly before marriage two people have to work towards god if not after marriage i never knew you were like that huh? what for the telling that's a silenism isn't it that's not english actually that is silenish 
So even after marriage, we need an encounter of the Lord Jesus Christ coming softly and tenderly and sweetly and healing the wounds by the thorns, other things in our father's house, in our parental house, in our work world, in our own bad experiences, Christ begins to heal. So young people who are considering marriage, you have a good chance now, before the, before the coming together comes, two people completely healed by Christ taking over, meeting at the altar, so that Christ is manifest each other's life and he becomes the union, the cementing glue. Please don't trust your goodness for marriage. Got it? Marriage is too sacred, too designed in heaven. Don't trust your goodness for marriage. Yeah. Trust Jesus' goodness in you healing, matching, bringing together. One more time, please don't trust your goodness for marriage, for business, for studies, any other contracts, you may succeed 60% or 70%. But in marriage, Christ must be the intercessor, mediator, arbitrator, always removing the cover-up and bringing the truth. That's the nature of God. So this is what Adam said. Why, about where he is, this is what Adam said. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? That was how, not that God didn't have eyes to see his omniscient. He saw the teak tree behind which Adam was hiding and she, he saw the satin tree where Eve was hiding, yes. He said, Adam said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, which means however fallen a person is or however damaged a person is, he, she hears God's voice. Give me a wave on that. God never forsakes. In our darkest moments, when we hit the rock bottom, his voice comes and says, I am still the same. I am still there. Let's work back. Let's pick up. Let's pick up the pieces. I'll help you. God's voice speaks to anybody, everybody. Nobody is God forsaken. There is only one place that is God forsaken. What's the name of that place? No, not Shangri-La. The name of that place is Gehenna, the lake of fire. But every other place short of that, his grace reaches and picks us up, picks up us picks us up. Shall we say thank you for Jesus? Thank you Lord Jesus. So Adam said, I was afraid. I am naked. I am hiding. The three things that happened to man, he lost his belonging. No one will take care of me. Insecure. I am afraid. Restored in Christ, I am loved. Become a child of God. Christ spoke up for me. I am no more afraid, I am sitting easy in my father's house, well provided table and that seat no one will take away from me. Do you remember an incident when you were seated at the edge of the seat? Okay, you fell in love and your father-in-law was a tough lawyer, tough as nuts. And you have to go and tell him, I have this idea about your daughter. And you are seated on the, on the, you remember Amrit, you were seated on the, no, no, or you get a note from the boss saying, report to my office immediately. Then you go and sit uneasily, don't know what. Anybody got a call to the principal's office anytime when you were in school? Some are saying many times. I was lower 4C. You know which college has lower 4C, isn't it? And I was in the English class. I had not taken my textbook. I think it was Tale of Two Cities. And the teacher was an Anglican priest. 
and my best friend Devaka Piris was next to me. I was telling him, show me the book so that he does not know I don't have a book. So I was th then he saw us talking in the class. He said, dear, why are you talking? And this my loyal friend said, not me, Mendis. <laughs> so the thing came out that I didn't have the textbook. I was marched off to the middle school principal's office. He was Mr. Virusinga. And my great worry is he knows my father and this episode that I got three of the best on my gluteus maximus will, be, will go to my father. Getting on the gluteus maximus was no problem. So I went trembling, trembling, trembling to the office and Mr. C.S. Virasinghe, you know, he had another name, Lucky, you remember that name? Yeah. Uh, everybody called him Paul Vira. You know, our college had Papatika, Paul Vira, Rifle, what else did we have, Lucky? Few other things we had, okay. Huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway. So I went there and it's written on a book and sent. He said, you here? I said, yes, sir. He didn't ask me to sit down, but I was standing on the edge if that is possible. Then he said, what is this? Okay, okay, don't do this again. And I was excused, thank God. So he didn't get to my father because I was excused. But when we come to God's house and God's presence and God's family, we are no more seated on the edge of the seat. Shall we give a hand clap to Jesus? We are fully functional, fully favored, fully inherited, all that God has, that entire room he has for us, he begins to furnish. I don't have to do it myself. So what is stature? Then I was feeling naked, wounded, birthless. That's what Adam felt. That's what sexually abused people feel, children or adults. When sexually abused, it's one of the most, perhaps the most wounding experience, very difficult to recover, because in the most sensitive thing, you got abused. Most pleasurable thing, you got abused. You understand why sexual abuse is very, very damaging. Adam felt like that when his innocence was violated by seduction and deception. Adam felt that. Issue of the fruit he ate was not a sexual issue, but the violation he felt was his intimacy was violated, his innocence was violated, he allowed himself to be actually raped. His innocence was raped. Did you understand that? I'm not exaggerating, that's how they felt. That's why they immediately covered themselves with Fig leaves, isn't it? Somehow what happened to them exposed themselves to feel we are naked. We are naked. We have to cover ourselves. So this cover-up goes on all the time and Jesus has to come inside us and grow his stature. Then we don't worry about the image we carry. We are concentrating on the Jesus build up inside his nature, his character, which is called stature. Did you understand this? I'll explain it again. When Christ is building up in the inside with Christ's virtue and Christ's quality, our image is improving, we feel it. But when that is not happening in the inside, we have to build our own image, fortitude, good manners, eloquence, right words, present ourselves that we may be appreciated and not rejected. The latter is a very painful exercise. And we come away wondering, did I impress enough? Did I say the right thing? Will they invite me again? Uh, will they think I'm a nice person kind of thing? Am I explaining myself enough? Being built in the inside with Christ's stature, giving us confidence, say confidence. If we don't build up with Christ's stature, we put up pretension. You understand the word? We are, we are pretending all the time. Fearful inside, bold outside. Feeling damage inside, showing strength outside. It's a very hard deal, equation to practice, where we feel the shortfall inside, but we'll f we put up a bold front outside. So the facades will be slowly folding up, France will go away, we will be we. So when someone meets us, 
He means real person because Christ in us has worked himself out to be Christ outside us. Do you think that's a good journey to begin? Possible? Already experienced in some areas? Christ in us. Working out to be Christ in all our words, in all our deeds. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are becoming new. This is the Christ stature. We are growing from the inside. We need not be conscious about how, how do I present myself? How do I, uh, uh, how, what will people think about me? It's not our, not our worry because Christ has given us confidence and built us. So Ephesians 4.13, we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ, stature manifesting in us. Proverbs 22, 29, do you see a man skilled in his work? He will stand before kings, he will not stand before obscure men. So this work of Christ, adding on to what we are skilled in, brings us to places that God is holding up for us. Our position is not tenuous, not slippery, we don't know what to do kind of thing, no. He gives us confidence and he gives us significance. So the stature of God is, he is truth, totally truth. So lies begin to leave us. Shall we say together? God is truth, lies begin to leave us. Pretensions begin to leave us. Put-ups begin to leave us. Cover-ups begin to leave us. And honesty becomes part of our value-added nature. We will stop boasting because we are actually we. We don't have to have pomp, pride or prejudice because we are actually, we have understood who I am in Christ. Did you understand that? So to simple people, we will be simple. To big people, we will be still simple. Isn't it? Because it is Christ in us. Once when we went to meet a president, as we went up the stairway, came a hollering, a huge Russian dog. And the president was helpless to hold the Russian dog. His wife just called the fellow's name. He put his head down and he went. So immediately we knew who is running the country. Now take it off the hand side, okay? That's not part of the sermon, all right. So when Christ is in us, it's a great relief. Wherever we are, whomever we are with, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the strength of our stature. Christ in us, the outworking of our life. Similarly, I can go through different attributes of God. God is faithful. He never lets us down. He never lets up on us. In our, in our darkest folly, he comes and says, let's do this better. I will recover it for you. I will recover it for you. That's God. So out of his faithful nature, we learn faithfulness. Faithfulness lifelong in marriage. Faithfulness in the spiritual family. We are born again to belong again. Will you shift from here because you have got to know there's a fantastic building, Wi-Fi enabled and every kind of LED light is blooming and much better. I think we have quite a nice stage, but stage is not the thing that keeps you, isn't it? It's a belonging. We are born again to belong again in a larger family. Uh, so I will take that uh, thing that has happened in us, practice secure belonging, stature and significance will follow. Significance is what output of our life. Stature is the input of our life. Stature is how we have grown in the inside. 
significance is what we output from a Christ grown up life in us. Now similarly people can do this without Christ. Then they'll have a measure of room. But when Christ comes into us, he expands that measure of room much more. Did you understand that? Practice secure belonging, stature, your input inside you will be strong and your significance, your output will be great. Much loved in biological family. God the Father has to heal the gaps and lapses of the biological family. Don't neglect it. There's no perfect home. There was one perfect home, the Garden of Eden, but an offer came for a better proposition was offered as seduction. Adam and Eve swallowed that better proposition, that what looked better for them, and it worked so ill. Born again to belong, can we have this slide? Born again to belong again in the spiritual family, hopefully forever, so that we constantly meet people who have always known us, which is the yardstick of our growth. We don't shift places, because there's something irking us in the inside. Attend on the thing that irks you in the inside, the thorn in your flesh, we need to attend on us. The changing the place doesn't change the thorn. Thorn is still there. So in Columbus circles, there's so much of shifting because church has lost the idea of growing tall with Christ one inch at a time. They are looking for inches that come from out Outfits of the external. External outfits cannot grow you in the internal stature. Only Christ can. So what are we doing? Born again to belong again in the spiritual family forever. It's not a perfect spiritual family, but a work in progress where you vitally contribute from day one. You coming into the family of God changed us. But you brought your flavor with you. You brought your nature with you into God's family. Did you understand that? Everyone's nature is assimilated into one body. This is the mystery of godliness. How he does it, only he knows. Who should come into for this molding and this baptism into one family? Only he can do it, isn't it? Each one of us is uniquely abled by him and he baptizes into one body to function harmoniously as one body, not as many people. You, so this is a Christ union that makes it possible. Closest example is the marriage. Closest example is the marriage. That's why Christ speaks of church as his bride. Belonging in a smaller group for share care, which is called koinonia, becoming members of one another. So please ensure that each of you has a reference point of a smaller group. Why the smaller group? Your connect group will have a diversity and a transparency, helping me to immerse inwardly in a safe and truthful environment of friendship helped by the Holy Spirit. So it is diverse and transparent. Stature grows in Christ as Jesus welds, melts, molds all we have acquired so far with all he can add to us. So we have knowledge, we have skill, we have walked away, our characters are made in a certain way by the time we come to Christ. Older we are, the more made we are. Then Christ begins the process of adding the oil of the Holy Spirit, putting us on the potter's wheel and making a vessel that can live with others and be filled by him. Only reason why we live with each other in the family of God is because Christ is filling us daily. So shall we say together, when Jesus is filling me daily, associating you is a pleasure. So what happens if Jesus doesn't fill us daily? Our own eccentric nature will pop out. We don't want that to happen in the church family. So Jesus fills us daily. It's a daily journey. Stature grows in Christ as Jesus wills, melts, molds all of us. 
uh, and the things we have acquired so far is uh, put together by Christ, overcoming lack and gaps. You grow confidence as God's image is restored in you. This is the confidence we have. And the shakiness, the shame, the put on, the cover-ups we have to do is where God's image is breached and broken in the inside. When Christ comes, he fills all in all. Let's say together, when Christ comes, he fills all in us all. And that is called the body of Christ. That is called the family of God. That is called the house of God. Christ fills all in all. This is the life he has with his wisdom fashioned for us. I will ask Hiranti to come and uh, lead us in prayer that Christ fills all in all. There's nothing where he leaves a hole, a gap, abrasion, wound, fracture, laceration, contusion, all the forensic injuries we have gathered in the life journey, Jesus heals us. <laughs>